good, y'all. So on this video, I'm going to be reacting to Kendrick Lamar tried to warn Drake and J. Cole. I don't know what this is referring to. I mean, obviously, it's about the like that this, but nothing has anything happened since then. I'm trying to think. I know the song was like the most streamed song this year. I know it's number one, but neither one really have responded except for Drake uh, going on stage and saying a speech about loving yourself or some shit. It was weird. Um, but other than that, it's been kind of radio silent. Um, so yeah, let's just see what he talking about. Questions like, why would Kendrick diss Drake? Why would he diss J. Cole? If y'all don't know, then you need to go to the, that, what video did I react to? What's the dirt? And he explains both of the, the disses in detail. Cole. And why would future a previous friend of Drake's let because Drake, in future, I guess, fell out over a business deal and a woman. So, I could, I mean, shoot, I could explain. Let this happen on his album. Well, today, we're going to check it out. Also, my name is Manny Balls. I'm going to be releasing a video every single Sunday this year at 12 p.m. CST. So, if you like music-related topics like this one, make sure to stick around. And I hope this is going to give me some new information, though. Because if this is everything that I already know, I'm going to speed throughout the video. And I can explain it to y'all, probably, in like a summarized format please subscribe now let's continue it all started back in 2011 when kendrick was oh, coming out of the scene following section 80. drake and kendrick met drake had kendrick feature on buried alive and even invited kendrick to join him on tour they also collaborated a few more times as well but that friendship quickly turned into a bitter rivalry in august of 2013 after Kendrick's verse on Big Sean's song Control came out. We usually own boys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Fact. Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Right. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. Right. They don't want to hear not one more now, no verse from you. This verse sent the rap game into shock and everyone thought it was crazy and most people understood what he was saying that he was cool with all of these people but that he's also competitive and wants to be the best in the rap game but good old drake who's known for being a tad bit sensitive seemed to have taken this the wrong way drake did a handful of interviews after this hinting at the fact that the verse hurt their relationship and basically saying that kendrick did this all just for some brief clout drake also said i didn't really have anything to say about it it just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all. And, and he, he did. So sorry about that, I guess. Since you feel In me? any platform. So when that day presents itself, I guess we can revisit the topic. Well, which can we revisit it? Because it, we it's happened multiple times. So can we? It. It's funny because everyone is revisiting the topic right now. Anyways, Kendrick pretty quickly dissed Drake back at the BT Awards Cypher when he, he said, Nothing's been the same this. since they dropped control and tucked a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Drake responded on Play his song, that. The Language, and later said that he had to stand his ground, but there weren't any hard feelings. Where are you at with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world? Where are you guys at now? Same place same place this is all i love from I the that. moment i did the verse to after the verse by this point it was clear there was at least some type of animosity between the artists but not some super intense beef over the following years the two artists would fire shots back and forth at each other like when kendrick said on king kunta following drake's ghostwriting but, allegations yeah. i can dig rapping but well no it wasn't following because didn't this come out before um meek mill and him got into it a rapper with a ghostwriter what the fuck happened drake then responded on the game song 100 saying i would have all of your fans if i didn't go pop and i stayed on some conscious shit in 2017 kendrick took some pretty direct shots at drake on the heart part four when he said jay-z hall of fame sit your punk ass down so that means you ain't bigger than rapping he said this because drake said he could make more money outside of rap and his producer also said that they make music in a genre beyond rap of course, there's been a handful of more disses and other issues throughout the last decade or so between Kendrick and Drake, but I'm just trying to highlight the important stuff because that would be a very long video. As we know though, Kendrick took a five-year hiatus after 2018, and while he was gone, Drake kept making jabs and references to him. You know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. I'm excited that the decade's about to turn and we're gonna see who can, you know, yeah. who can who can go that extra stretch. Oh, about these guys that go away three, four, five years, wanna chill out and all that shit, that's not me. Drake even took a super direct shot when he said, fake woke, 
fake deep, you ain't no fame before me. Give your ass a little sneak peek. Now you gotta take a back seat. But Kendrick could not keep letting this slide. When Kendrick came back, he released an introspective album and collabed with Baby Keem a few times. But his priority clearly wasn't Drake, other than the smoking on your top five line in Family Ties. But after a while, it seems like Kendrick was fed up with Drake running his mouth, making jabs and subliminals on every other album he released. Do you think he thinks Drake is up there with him? No! Okay. That's what I was No! Hell no! Kendrick knew Drake wasn't better than him, and he wanted to make sure Drake knew that too. All of this led to March 22nd of 2024, when Future, Metro Boomin, and Kendrick Lamar released the track like that. When people were listening through Future and Metro Boomin's collab album, We Don't Trust You, they quickly noticed that Kendrick's feature on the song Like That was targeted at Drake. At first, his verse doesn't seem particularly targeted at anyone until he says, F sneak dissin', first person shooter, I hope they came with three switches. He yeah, could no, when, you, when he said niggas clicking up, I was like, oh, you feel me? And then when I went back and listened to, um, when I went back and listened to, um, what's his face? Future at the end of his when he said something you can have that because she ain't mine and then knowing that they beefed over a girl and then he said is you like that and the whole allegations of Drake being a bitch and like even if he is like has shooters and shit like that he don't do shit he not kicking in he not shooting shit he not doing nothing he is ordering them to do stuff you know what I'm saying so I was like damn it's the whole song because 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 it all you feel 10 me? years later on saying motherfuck the big three it's just big me i'm really like that and your best work is a light pack prince outlive mike jack for all your dogs getting buried that's a k with all these nines he gonna see pet cemetery this is a pretty Bum. obvious reference to drake and j cole's song first person shooter where repeatedly on the song drake and j cole talk about how they are the best but there is also a line from cole on first person shooter where he says love when they argue the hardest mc is it k dot is it aubrey or me we the big three like we started a league drake j cole and kendrick have always been viewed as the big three of hip-hop in the last decade and a half but kendrick came out saying that he's the best kendrick also views some of the lines from first person shooter as sneak disses such as who the goat who you bitches really rooting for like a kid that act bad from january to november it's just you and cole so while j cole named all three artists in the big three drake only named himself and cole leaving kendrick out of the equation not only that but kendrick targets drake in particular saying that Drake's best work is a light pack, then compares him and Drake to Michael Jackson and Prince, since on First Person Shooter, Drake pointed out how he tied up Michael Jackson for number one songs. Prince outlived Mike Jack, which damn, is, is a cold bar, not only because you're, you're literally talking about how long both of them lived on this planet, but obviously Kendrick is uh, getting a bit uh, conceptual here and making a comparison. You're pop, you're mainstream, you're lowest common denominator, you are a agreeable me i'm prince i'm the experimenter i'm the innovator i'm the one who's daring i am the mold that other people are copying i'm the one who's ahead of the curve then kendrick directly references drake's album for all the dogs saying they are getting buried like the stephen king book pet cemetery with shots this direct taken at drake the rest of the verse makes a lot more sense when Kendrick says lines like, these people talking out of their necks, say it's a lot of goofies with a check, and people clicking up but cannot be legit. Even lines like DOT, the money, power, respect, the last one is better, can be interpreted in a way that shows Kendrick elevating himself. Yeah, because he believes that respect is better than money, um, maybe stat, um, status, statistics, and uh, Drake is very focused on... Oh, well, I am the highest this, or I have the most this, I have the more money, and stuff like that. But it's like, respect-wise, who respects you? And that's like, you feel me? So I feel like that's also... Self above Drake. Because yeah. Kendrick has that respect from OG rappers, from oh, pure yeah. rap fans, from the guys who really love the art that Drake never really had or never really has gotten now drake has gotten respect from the ogs and the pure rap fans like he has don't get me wrong but he didn't get it right away like kendrick did kendrick came in and everyone was like okay this is the guy so we understand why kendrick went after drake it's fairly public knowledge that him and drake haven't been big fans of each other but why would he go after cole many people think that j cole was caught watch this as well they've had a little theirs to me seems more friendly you feel me there seems like friendly competition i respect you you respect me 
but maybe not like they're probably not best of friends or nothing but they do respect each other um and probably really think each other are great artists and stuff like that but I watched a whole video on that too. On the crossfire of the disc. But J. Cole and Kendrick have actually been throwing subliminals at each other for a while yep. now. Rap is a very competitive genre, and it's no secret that real lyricists want to be the best there is. And despite Cole and Kendrick being good friends years ago, there seems to have been some type of animosity between the two artists over the past decade or so. I don't lie. I said this to my mom. I said, I feel like from Cole, and again, I don't know, but this was just like a theory, is that there is some jealousy. He's always compared to those two but he's more of the conscious wave so of course he gets directly compared to um kendrick and i feel like because it's always been like he fell short like in in everybody or a lot of people will say kendrick's the goat kendrick's this kendrick's that kendrick's different a lot of people have said j cole's boring but j cole's whatever it's like even if somebody's giving kendrick and cole credit it's like they're almost getting giving Kendrick more credit or when they've been on songs together Kent Cole has admitted that Kendrick has ate him up sometimes or people have said the Black Friday verse that Kendrick forgot or they forgot Kendrick was even rapping on his J. Cole's beat you feel me like it, it sounded like a whole new song but you know J. Cole didn't do as well as Kendrick so I think there's a level of jealousy and that can make you um, to that degree of like millions of people saying stuff like that, that can, and you're very critical of yourself, that can make you very, <sighs> have a lot of animosity to somebody. Even if you love them, it can, you're constantly comparing yourself to them. I want to be better than you. I want to be better. I want to be the best, the greatest, whatever. But you're the one that's <laughs> in my way. So I feel like it's an unconscious thing of jealousy. But I don't know. That's my theory. But it might be some other things that happen in the scene, behind the scenes, or whatever. Oh. Similar to Kendrick and Drake, Kendrick and Cole used to be good friends in the early 2010s. When J. Cole met Kendrick, he immediately knew he was talented and wanted to sign him. Cole was sending him beats, they collabed here and there, and were even talking about making a collab album. This is something that never happened and many fans speculated up until recently that this collab album would come out. But their friendship, mm -hmm. similar to Drake and Kendrick, would turn into more of a rivalry with Kendrick. And those are my favorite fucking two artists, two rappers. Kendrick a little bit above him, though, but still. Kendrick's control verse in 2013. Like I said earlier, he mentioned Cole. But again, he also said that he has love for all these artists. J. Cole has made it very clear that he is a competitive artist. And that he huh. sees artists like Kendrick and Drake as his competitors. He even hinted at the fact that it may have, in the past, affected their relationships. Because I think I was so competitive. I don't know how they would feel. You have to talk to them. But I know for myself, <clears throat> I was so competitive early on. That like even though we were all friends i would say we were all friends and friendly like i wasn't uh i've never been a reach out you know what i mean like i never been a i never been that person so it's very likely that this control verse sparked a flame in cole not only that but kendrick began winning multiple awards like bet's and grammys over cole along with lists like mtv's hottest mc list where kendrick got number one and cole didn't even make it these things probably led j cole to feel like he was left out of the conversation do you see what I'm saying, bro? I feel like I'm predicting the future. I don't know. I'm on point. And possibly even had him feeling some type of animosity and Drake rather than competing with them. You know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never, I, we never kicked it. You know what I mean? Like, we never really even did nothing. So, like, I, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm more interested in the genuine relationship than before I was interested in the competition. And it seems like he was able to build that relationship with Drake. I mean, they're literally on tour right now. But Kendrick seems to be a different story. When Kendrick returned in 2022 with his album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, people speculated that his line on the song, Count Me Out, was directed at Cole. He said, ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And many people know that J. Cole's final album is supposed to be called The Fall Off. A handful of fans have also speculated that Cole's been sending subliminals to Kendrick as well, especially on his song with Benny the Butcher called Johnny P's Caddy. On the song, he said things like, I put your favorite rapper neck in a noose, never letting them loose. I'm probably gonna go to hell if I ask Jesus for a feature. Some see the glass as empty, I see a glass full of ether, collecting his bread in mass like he a Catholic preacher. Some speculated that these lines were targeted at Benny himself but benny said he didn't think so he thought they were meant for someone else that on my record so you know people ask me about that but mm -hmm. we've been debating about that man like 
he was talking to somebody, man. If you yeah, ask yeah, me, yeah. Mm-hmm. if you ask me, he was talking to somebody. Yeah, I saw folks. T- yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I saw folks saying they, they felt like he might have been taking shots at you on his own record. I was like, nah. This led a few people to think he was talking about Kendrick because of the religious imagery in his humble video. Also, Cole said at the end of the song, "On God, the best rapper alive." Headshot, now go and ask the best rappers that died. They tell you he never lied. This seems like it could be a reference to when Kendrick said he's the best alive. So great that he died. Some also interpreted his verse on the secret recipe by Yachty to have shots at Kendrick too. Because of lines like, people fake progressive and woke, I started saying less. I had to stop it. I said that this is, some of what he's saying is really similar to um, the video I just reacted to about the subliminal war between Kendrick and Cole um and i said i don't feel like this could be or it could be about kendrick it doesn't make sense to me because in family ties kendrick had a line don't remember how it went um was it family ties or was it uh i'm not your savior when he was like they all greedy i don't care for no public speaking he was talking about people that are like speak up about these you know the people we look up to and the um spokespeople for these things and it's like they they just want to check for real so they pandering for real and so that's why i was like i mean he's saying the same stuff so it doesn't make sense but because drake and uh jay cole are friends and they both had a line like this then it makes you wonder like well are they talking about kendrick and why would they be saying this the fake woke thing when Kendrick has been seen to be involved in the community and going to protest. No, he didn't post anything, but I think that speaks to more of him not being fake. You feel me? Because why he got to post it for people to, he, you feel me? I don't know. I don't know. It's how they profit off of racial stress. Studio steppers move in extra on songs. The, the can- stepper, the studio steppers, the steppers. Whenever you say steppers, and I don't, did he say steppers before? Probably, but I don't know. But that, because of his Kendrick's um, album title, it can rep. This seems like even more of a Kendrick diss when you think about the fact that Drake called him fake woke as well. With all of this in mind, y'all think I fucking watched this video first. Yeah, and I just swear to God, I didn't. Oh my God. Bro. Mind. First person shooter may contain more Kendrick sneak disses from Cole than many thought. Cole said, A lot of people debate in my numeral. Not the three, not the two, I'm the UNO. He also said, We the big three like we started a league. But right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad yeah. Ali was nicknamed the greatest. So here Cole is in this song saying that while these other guys are good, he is still the best. And while many people thought that Cole was just caught in the crossfire between Drake and Kendrick's beef, it seems that Kendrick was a bit more intentional with his diss. Even Kendrick's line, if you walk around with that Duh. stick, it ain't Andre 3K. That's my song. So when I heard that, I was like, damn, they done got him. You feel me? How your two favorite artists beef? And that shit hurt right here. That shit hurt. Can be interpreted as a diss on Cole since he has a song called Stick where he talks about keeping one with him. Even though Kendrick mostly went after Drake on Like That, it seems that he wanted Cole to know that he was the best. This is why Kendrick chose to respond to first person shooter rather than just dissing Drake like he has right, been throughout right, right, his career. Right, right, right. Also, I and gotta give a huge shout anymore. out to What's the Dirt because. Okay, I was about to say because he. <laughs> I just reacted to What's the Dirt's video and I was like, oh, a lot of this is very <laughs> similar. Um. So yeah, I was just like, he made a really good video on Cole and Kendrick's subliminal beef over the years and had a lot of this information and speculation. And what was crazy is that his video came out like a week before like that even, uh, was released. So I was like, did you have some inside tea that a song was coming out with him in? Cause why would you choose now of all times for, it was just weird. It was weird. Said that he would bet his whole channel that Kendrick would respond to first person shooter. And he did, which is absolutely crazy. So make sure to check out his video after this one. Yeah, if yeah, you want yeah, a much fire, more in depth breakdown on Cole and Kendrick's relationship with even more evidence that there has been a subliminal battle it's going fine. on between the two. But this fuck? leaves us with Bro, one last question. Blue. Why would future and Metro Boomin be okay with such a direct diss on their Metro Boomin? That whole the tweet and deleters shit, yeah, you know Drake, Drake, uh, to the tweet and deleters. Y'all make me stick to my stick to my stomach, fam. That shit was between him and Metro. 
there's a very public beef between them. I don't really know why. I just know they don't like each other. I need, I should look into that. Why? So, somebody tell me why did uh the Metro Boomin and uh, Drake not like each other? I know Future's their album, them, but. Well, we've known that Metro Boomin and Drake have had a bit of a beef for a little while. It all started when Drake was left off of Metro Boomin's album Heroes and Villains back in December of 2022. Metro explained that there wasn't really room for Drake and that he liked the album how it was and couldn't find a spot for Drake on it. I was just in the studio with Drake one time because we were going to do some stuff on my album. And he just wanted to hear some songs from my album. Then he heard that one and really wanted to get on it. But like I was letting him know that he was really just done for real, and I was really just set on how it was. I was like, Brian, and try to sell you no dream. Like it's really like just locked in. I'm locked in where it was. We don't really know if this is the only reason they began beefing, or if there was. If that's the reason, I don't. Know, I don't do music, so I don't know how big of a deal that is. But that seems very petty, like to be mad at somebody because they're like okay this is like if i paint something i like painting i paint something and then somebody's like you know what let me add this and i'm like actually i like it how it is and they get mad and like i want to fuck with you bitch then i'm gonna be like well then don't what like you feel me like i don't i don't see why that would be an issue you, you don't shouldn't you be like oh respect it's your, it's your album <laughs> You got it. Like, what? There's more to it, but this is just how Metro explained it. Regardless, the beef flared up again more recently. And, he, and he, he could have left stuff out because it's his side, but... You know, Metro Recently, when Drake and 21 Savage's collab album Her Loss kept winning Best Album of the Year over his album Heroes and Villains. Metro tweeted, Yet Her Loss still keeps winning Rap Album of the Year over Heroes and Villains. Proof that award shows are just politics and not for me. I don't care about awards honestly. The true award and reward is knowing that the music I spend so much time on brings joy to people's everyday lives. This tweet was quickly deleted, but from tweets Metro liked, it's clear that he had an issue with Drake. Drake seemingly and quite funnily responded to this in a live funnily. stream. And to the rest of you, to the, to rest, the rest of you, the non-believers, non the underachievers, the tweet and deleters, you guys made me sick to my stomach tonight. I did a reel with this. That's why I was like, girl, why how don't you know the fucking words you had to memorize for that damn reel? Ooh, that shit that shit was funny though. <laughs> oh god, that shit was funny. Honestly, if you guys wanna look in my eyes, you guys wanna do something? You guys that's what I thought. After this, Metro posted a meme from RDC World on his Twitter. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, don't shoot, don't, don't really, don't shoot. Really. <laughs> <laughs> talking about this. this feud was brief and it's public knowledge but no one even knew that future and drake were beefing until this album came out which has left everyone wondering why drake and future were great friends for years first collaborating all the way back in 2011 on the you know what would be crazy is if you know this little i'm, I'm not saying a little as in like petty but if they're uh jay calling uh drake's friendship somehow cracks or whatever and then J. Cole starts dissing Drake. And then J. Cole and Kendrick hop on the same song. And now we got Rick Ross that unfollowed. Um, we got Future. We got Make the Stallion, because Make the Stallion dissed Drake. We got everybody dissing Drake. Bro, that would be crazy. A remix of Future's song, Tony Montana. Funnily enough, there was a little bit of drama with this collab. With word. Future being upset at Drake for not showing up to the video shoot, which is understandable. Regardless, they were able to put that aside and collabed on many more songs over the years. There was another issue in 2013 when Who's Future this? said he He's inspired Drake's song started oh, from the uh, bottom. Future? He was in the studio session with me. That's He's when I had the chosen one. Mm. And I'm like, started. when you make it from the bottom, you the chosen one. So when we was at the studio, Drake came by the studio, and I always tell my engineer, started from the bottom. So uh, when I put the beats on, I was like, man, put, put the beats in. So I always say, started from the bottom. So when I say started from the bottom, he thought I was talking about a song. So when I played Chosen One, he loved the Chosen One, but he was waiting for me in this, and Chosen One to say started from the bottom. So he said instantly, he telling me this story. He bought me a bottle of Louis XIII that I never opened up. Wow. Because of this story. And I was like, man, I want a bottle. I need publishing. 
<laughs> this wasn't a big deal and they were still cool despite this, but it could have been another reason that there might have been some animosity between the two. Anyways, Future and Drake continued to collaborate for years to come, with one of their most notable collaborations being the collab album What A Time To Be Alive in 2015. Great it's album. also interesting to note that this album was executively produced by Metro Boomin. They continued frequently collaborating up until 2022, when they last collabed twice on Future's album I Never Liked You. Most fans had no clue that Future and Drake had any sort of beef until We Don't Trust You came out. That's when the internet detectives got to work. Many people began to think that Future's verse on the title track was a diss about Drake. He said, You my number one fan dog. Sneak dissing, I don't understand dog. Pillow talking, acting like a fed dog. I don't need another fake friend. Can't be about a hoe cause we sharing in your feelings why you playing. Then people began speculating that the reason they were beefing was over a girl and even supposedly Maybe. found the girl who it was. But Metro Boomin shut this down right away, Maybe. saying, stop making stuff up for engagement and enjoy the music. But then there was also another rumor going around before the album released that Future and Metro were upset at Drake for some reason. Joe Budden said before the album came out that he sensed some tension between the two parties. And back to my uh, future Metro Boomin Drake tension. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's weird that nothing ever happened with that fucking hit smash song that Future and Drake made with Tim's? What? What do you mean? Not Wait happened. for you? It was a hit. When you say, it was a hit. When you say what? No, it was a hit. It was a smash. So what do you mean? Nothing happened with it. Never heard it again. They also pointed out in this podcast how Future and Metro were tight. And because Future iconically oh, says, no. if young Metro don't trust you, I'ma shoot you, for Metro's producer tag, and the album was called We Don't Trust You, and we knew there was some beef between Metro and Drake, that Future may have sided with Metro just because they're friends. With all of this in mind, the entire album seems like it could be interpreted as a diss to Drake. The title of the album is literally We Don't Trust You, and many of the outros on the album seem like they could also be directed at Drake. So we can't say for sure that like we know what? the exact I, I, reason I, I, that Future I and Drake- I couldn't see that. I, I, I couldn't see all them little tiny letters. What, what Drake are beefing, but we do know that it is in fact happening. Regardless, this beef allowed for fans to interpret previous lines from Drake's last album that seemed to fan the flames of the beef. For example, on For All what The Dogs, do? Drake had a song called What Would Pluto Do? Where on the hook he said, what would Pluto do? He'd F the hoe so I did it. Originally, people thought this was a shout out to Future, but looking back, it might have been a diss, and it also may support the idea that they're beefing over a girl. There was even a lyric where Drake said on the song Middle of the Ocean, the lyrics begin to reveal themselves over time periods. Promise you'll get that when the sky clears. Many people again assumed that this was a reference to Future. People even went as far to say that many of the song titles were based on Drake's titles, but I think that may have been a bit of a reach. Regardless, this entire beef took the internet by storm, and it seems like Drake may have indirectly responded to the diss at a show. No, no, he he responded, and it was stupid. Like, what's up? Make a song. I'm gonna let you know how I'm feeling. Listen. I got my fucking head up high, my back straight, I'm 10 fucking toes down in Florida or anywhere else I go, and I know that no matter what, it's not a nigga on this earth that can ever fuck with me in my life. And that's how I want you to walk out of here tonight. We even saw Drake liking a post from Aiden Ross saying that Kendrick has a full diss track ready. And Drake also posted on Instagram with the caption, they rather go to war with me than admit they are their own worst enemy. There also have been these strange billboards popping up recently saying that hip hop is a competitive sport. And we aren't sure who is putting them up apart from Spotify, but something is coming. This entire beef has had many artists picking sides. Even Rick Ross and Nav unfollowed Drake. It seems like the entire industry is going to- I seen this picture and I was just like, whoa. And they need to take Meek Mill up out of there. And if y'all don't know why, to go watch my recent video. <laughs> that shit's so stupid. Um, but by the looks of it, Kendrick side got it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cole. I love you, but your your side looking a little eek right now. Look a little eek. You feel me? But no, for real, this is so war, resulting in funny memes like this one. And honestly, I'm excited to see it unfold. So the only question I have left for you guys is, whose side are you picking? Kendrick, what the fuck? Very unfortunate that Cole is in the middle of this, but sorry, I gotta do what I gotta do. What I will say is I will not be biased. I might get mad if like Drake released a diss track and it was good. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? That shit. <sighs>
I'm going to be mad, but I'm going to say that shit was fire, though. But you feel me? And if Cole do it, too, I'm going to be like, damn, bro. Why are you on the other side? For what? But if it's good, it's good. You feel me? But I'm, I'm ready. Because I know Kendrick. That I know if they release good diss tracks, it's going to make Kendrick come 800 times harder. And so, just as long as nothing gets violent. And like I said in my Like That uh, reaction video, as long as y'all niggas don't go to Twitter. Because Kanye, for some reason, has inserted himself in this. And nobody talked about him. No one said his name. What, what did Kendrick say? He said, say my name, th- name three times and you'll see Candyman or something. Because it's all in your eyes. Most of them tell that. Whatever. But he just like heard this is like all oh, these niggas. This is, well, let me shut this down because I'm better than all of y'all. That's what happened. So anyways, this was very interesting. Um, I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for somebody to, uh, excuse me. I'm waiting for somebody to release something, respond. Cause right now Kendrick, like I said, like that is number one on the top, the hot 100. Um, it's the most streamed song of 2024, I believe. I don't know. It's just crazy. But anyways. Y'all like, help me, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. I'll see y'all in the next one.